What's up guys, my name is Rob Bailey and I'm daily vlogging every single day for the next year and we're on day 73. Today you're gonna see two things in a video. You're gonna see our day two of being in the studio working on our project Land and Ammo. Land and Ammo, Land and Ammo. And I'm gonna to explain to you why I'm not vegan anymore. You ready? I'm ready. I'm so fucking ready. I'm fucking... <laughs> I've been warming up all morning. Yeah, you you really. Uh, this is like the most excited I've been in like 15 years, maybe. Oh my god, we better be careful with that. <laughs> Burning too hot. So, day two at the studio. Uh, today is vocals, vocals, vocals. I've got a um, got a couple calls, but in between calls, Jake's ripping, and then I am going to rip, and then I don't know. I don't know what's next. She was the finest muse he'd ever know. He knew it when she went away to Ohio. Ready? The supply of U.S. soil's going up, up, up. Voice needs to wake up. Putting the batteries in them, they could get bumped just like in transit Ooh, and then they would drain they the batteries. Yeah, fuck. You need a battery boy. <laughs> but like, I'm not trying to like put batteries in them at the show. I want them to buy it at the show and they can just yeah. turn it on. You know, yeah, I don't want them like to be a, like, "Oh, you gotta put back." Like a sexy, um, I'm sure there's a sexy female, mm. right? That like that'll get the nerves Puts going. the batteries in for you. <laughs> yeah, and she does it like, yeah, like that. With her charm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. One more of those. Yep. That's just what I'm here to be. Is oh, this, my my weird uncle <laughs> singing along from the crowd. This would make me happy. Horses hardly ever sleep. That sounds beautiful to me. Oh, I love this song. I th I almost think like I should do the whole song. Yeah, definitely. All right. The horses would get upset if I didn't. Yeah. Any, so I can probably just get gritty with it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, my man. Tired fingers. <laughs> you fucking out here just. 17 songs a day. Hardly ever sleep. Horses hardly ever sleep. If I was a horse. All right, here we go. If I was a horse. I think I missed if I was if. If, if. There we go. This will make me happy. I like that. Man, I can't wait to play this. You're testing me. This this timing's really hard for me. I th Horse. All right. Horses hardly ever sleep. Yeah, that's the way to do it, 100%. Yeah, Jake's a weirdo. If I was a horse, I would love you like... Oscar loves Echo. That was good. <laughs> Let's find out. I want to throw more Let's Go's in it too. Let's not forget that. Or Horsey Time or. Yeah. Clickety clack. <laughs> Drop your dick. Who wants to kick ass? Who wants to kick ass? Who wants to kick ass? <laughs> yeah. I live the rest of my days. 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 Yeah. All right, so I'll try not to make this too long-winded. We just wrapped up in the studio. We're back. We just ate. We made a really good stir-fry. Um, 
and I want to sort of talk about, I've seen this question a lot about, Rob, why aren't you vegan anymore? So for any of you guys that know, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly a larger individual. Um, I've been on light TRT for, for a while now. Um, so that's helped me maintain my size. But I went vegan, or I went ovo, what is it? I went ovo pescatarian for six months. And then for the next six months, I was pescatarian and I was in fantastic shape. Um, I was eating very, very clean. And then I ended up going vegan, full vegan. And I think I was full vegan for like three or four years. Um, so that was, I've been not vegan for maybe two years. I was probably like 30, 33 years old to like 37 or something like that. I was probably vegan. Um, and everybody wants to know why, why did you stop, right? Because I, was, I think I was a big uh, leverage point for vegans because I'm 6'3", I was still holding 260, 270. Um, over time, food, I just started falling into bad habits, bad vegan habits, not being able to find food, so being like, I'll just eat french fries. Um, but I sort of want to talk about why I stopped being vegan and sort of what the trigger was to get me to sort of start eating everything again. And it was a, it was a, a slow, a slow scale, but the initial trigger was I followed a lot of pages. And if you're vegan or you're looking to go vegan, this will help. There's a lot of pages out there that you can follow that highlight animal torture, right? They highlight animal torture and it sort of kept me in line. So a bunch of these vegan pages with very aggressive content, I would, I would check in on that. And if I was always like, Oh, that bacon smells good. I would watch, um, pigs get tortured and killed. And I'd be like, never mind. I'm, I don't need to do that. Um, so around the time of the election, right, when it was Biden versus Trump, um, a bunch of the vegan pages sort of like militarized and they became very aggressive. And one of the things that kept coming up was, was pro was abortion, right? So it was pro-life, uh, or what is it? Pro-life or, uh, pro-choice, right? And, um, <clears throat> pro-life, pro-choice. I, I just... I'm, I'm pro freedom. So even if I don't morally align with something, I still want people to have the ability to do whatever they want to do. So although I might not morally align with, with abortion, it's also not, you know, I don't know. I, it's, it's a hard topic for me, right? Cause I believe in freedom over everything. Um, same thing. If you want to chop off your penis and you're a full grown adult, fucking go for it, bro. Whatever you want to do. Um, I don't really care, right? I, I think that as long as we leave the kids alone, we're okay. But one of my problems was the a lot of the vegans' Instagram pages sort of militarized, and they were very pro-choice or pro-abortion. And that was a big trigger for me. And it made me sort of start listening to a lot of my friends in Montana, which are very responsible hunters. Um, I align with these guys um, like a million percent, right? Very good hunters, very good family men, strong masculine men that, you know, live in Montana. And they were always trying to push for me. I was like, nah, 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 fam. And then when the vegan pages got very, very political, um, it, it, that's not what turns me off, but that's what made me take a step back and think to myself, like, man, I'm, it, it seems like these, like you can't be vegan and be pro-choice, right? You have to be vegan and pro-life. And I started realizing like a lot of the identity to politics that were all mixed together and it made me take a step back. And then what I really, really started looking at was, you know, one, what they put in our water, right? What they put in our food um, and how they're pushing to generally feminize masculine men. I, the, the, the attack on masculinity, the attack on Andrew Tate, the attack on any sort of like strong male, right? I, I don't need to go too far into that, but the weakening of the male. And I sort of started to take a look around and I took some inventory of my body and how I felt, right? I, I, I wasn't, my body wasn't getting better. It was deteriorating. It was more and more back pain. Things were getting worse. My shoulder was starting to hurt more. I just slowly was falling apart. And I was like, I wonder if it's age or I wonder if it's actually my diet. So I added eggs back in and instantly, obviously my diet got a lot easier. So I added eggs. Maybe this was like two, two and a half years ago. I added eggs. Um, and then I started adding like a little bit of meat back in and I instantly felt great. 
Um, sort of like how I originally went vegan and I instantly felt great, right? I, I did. When I turned vegan, I was like, man, inflammation's going away, all these different things. Um, so I don't know the science behind it. Whatever the science is, I just know that me eating everything right now, um, I feel really, really good. And I think it was a great point in time in my life. Um, I like testing myself for long periods of time. For you guys that don't know, I was straight edge. Um, I, you know, I partake in whatever now, but I was straight edge from uh, 15 to like 27. And it made me sort of hold myself accountable to a lot of things and go to college parties and be like, nah, I don't drink. You know, and that's very hard to say at the age of like 18, 19, 20. So it gave me a lot of self-confidence and it did a lot of things for me. So I'm not mad about it. I'm not sad about it. It was just sort of a period in my life um, that, you know, I don't, I don't regret. I don't take back or anything like that. I'm not an advocate for meat. I'm not an advocate for being vegan anymore. I have, I have friends on both sides. Um, I just think that I, t I really did take a look when that abortion conversation came up and I was like, this is, we're being fucking hypocrites here. Um, if we're fighting for life, we need to fight for all life at all times. Um, you know, and, and not only that, I didn't really align. I don't know. It's just in closing, cause this is, this isn't really where I, I intended going this long. I didn't even know how to answer the question, but in closing, um, I think everyone should just do whatever they want. Right. I, I, I understand that morally, um, a lot of us don't align, but you know, that's one of the beautiful things about America. And I'll finish with this. I think that a lot of people compare us to a lot of other countries. Uh, and I've, I'm well traveled, right? I'm, I'm very well traveled. And, uh, America is a hard one to compare. And the reason that I love America is it's so fucking diverse, right? You can go to different cities and there's tons of different people. And like, I have tons of different friends in America that are every single shade of everything. And every nationality and religion and all that shit and it's just it's crazy the mixture of america and i think that's what makes us so rad and so innovative is is the mixture of people and when we're compared to a lot of these other countries like you know all well, over in denmark or over in fucking sweden and it's like everyone's the same exact person there like they're the same it's like fucking montana like if we just based fucking <laughs> the United States on, on a single state like Montana. It's like, yeah, it's fucking 1% black, but we're not doing that. I mean, the nation's made up of a really exciting mixture of people. So I think the differences are what makes us amazing. And I think freedom is what makes us, uh, like level two amazing. So anyway, that's my little rant. Sorry. I talked so long. Uh, I'm a daily fucking vlogger and I'll see you guys tomorrow.